Ready to boost your income as a teenager and develop crucial life skills that will benefit you in the long run? This video will walk you through 10 realistic side hustles that are well suited for young individuals offering opportunities to make money. Whether you're passionate about transforming your hobbies into a business, offering your expertise as a tutor, or delving into the world of freelance work, these side hustles offer a unique opportunity to combine earning with learning. Let's go. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name's Evan, I'm a real estate agent and mortgage broker, and I'm here to answer all your questions. Picking up a side hustle at any age is a fun and exciting way to challenge yourself and also earn a little extra money each month. Number one on our list is being a dog walker or a pet sitter. One of the more well-known jobs you can have as a teen or young adult, as long as you like pets and they like you, then this job could be an option for you. Dog walkers usually walk dogs for a set period of time every day uh, to be allow the dogs out of the house to get their much needed exercise. It's during these times that dogs tend to use the bathroom, uh, so be prepared for any sudden bathroom breaks. Eventually, once you have a reputation and the necessary experience, you could even start walking three, four, even half a dozen dogs at, or so at a time to increase your earnings and be more efficient with your time. However, be sure to take notes of your dog's tendencies and personality so that you are in control at all times and are prepared for eventual dog-to-dog -dog confrontations. You can typically earn around minimum wage as a dog walker, but more seasoned dog walkers can earn 20 to 50 an hour or even more. Pet sitters are responsible for the pets when their owners are away or busy. It is typical during a normal visit uh, to give the animal water and food, uh, change the litter box if necessary, play with the pet, uh, groom and clean the pet, and even administer medicine. You, you basically temporarily shoulder the responsibilities of the owner. Uh, in some cases, you might be asked to grab the mail, turn the lights on and off, or even turn on the security system. Just basic things around the house while they're away. Typical pet sitters can earn between $15 and $25 per visit, while more seasoned pet sitters can earn between $25 and $50 or more per visit. Another well-known side hustle is babysitting. Now this is typically when the parents are away or when they're having the occasional date night. Depending on the children's age, you could be responsible for things like preparing meals, changing diapers, bathing them, helping with homework, playing with them, and even preparing them for bed. You will need to be patient and responsible and very attentive as a babysitter because kids and chaos go hand in hand. It will take time, but you will get the hang of children's schedules, likes and dislikes, and overall personalities. Babysitters typically earn between $15 and $20 an hour, but it's not uncommon for a more seasoned babysitter to ask for more. They can ask for more depending on how many kids there are, uh, if they need to spend the night, and even if specialized care is required. Now this one can be a hit or miss depending on your school district. Selling food, drinks, and other items to your fellow students can be a great way to earn some money. You need to take into consideration the size of your school and the trends. What is everybody talking about? What do they tend to buy the most of? What do they tend to bring the school the most of? It would be worth your time to experiment with different selections to see which one sells the best and to who. You also need to consider your pricing. A six pack of 16.9 ounce Coca-Cola bottles can cost around $4 at Walmart. If you charge $1.50, you can make around $5 profit. If you charge $2, you can make $8 profit. But be sure to consider and understand your clientele and see what they're willing to spend. You wanna make a profit, but you need to stay competitive. Frequency and location are other big things to consider. How often can you go to the store to get more supplies? Do you have any supplies in your locker? And if so, how often can you go get it? Where in the school are most of your clients? Is it the gym? Is it the library, the cafe? Is it before or after school? These are things you need to consider. Now, I remember vividly in school, people selling things out of their backpack all the time. So in middle school, we had what was called silly bands, which were small little rubber bracelets. They served no purpose, uh, but they had like cool designs. So like a Christmas tree or like a baseball bat. Uh, and everybody wanted them because everybody else had them. So they were cool. Uh, and then in high school, we had was fidget spinners. Uh, people were doing them in the hallway, uh, they were doing them in class, they were doing them everywhere. Uh, and I had, I remember people with backpacks, you know, sitting in the hallway or in the cafeteria, offering 
uh, different selections, different kinds, different sizes, different prices, uh, and kids buying them before they even had the chance to ask their parents to buy them. So if you know your market and you know your clientele, you can make a killing at any age. Another side hustle to consider is snow removal. Now this one is seasonal, but you can still make a lot of money. This is one of the more physically demanding side hustles, so be prepared. Going around asking neighbors if they want their driveways shoveled can be very easy. So if you start your rounds, I don't know, towards the beginning of a snowfall, uh, hitting on doors and taking reservations, uh, you can expect many happy homeowners glad that they don't have to go outside in the freezing cold for two hours to do their driveway. It could be especially worth your time pursuing homeowners that are fairly old and with crazy long driveways. Armed with a few shovels, some salt, your buddies, and hopefully your dad's snowblower, you can tackle these driveways left and right, earning $15 to $25 an hour, not including tip. This is a great way to earn some money, especially in the winter when you're just gonna be inside doing nothing. And it's also a great way to help your friends and family in need. Tutoring is an excellent way to earn some money and add something to your resume. Now note, tutoring can go beyond the subjects you learn in school. It can also be applied to musical instruments, sports, college prep like the SAT and ACT, and even building resumes. As long as you have a skill that you excel in, you're golden. Another thing to note is that for tutoring, you're caring for the well-being of someone else. Obviously, since you're their tutor, they're not as great in the subject as they could be. So just because you're good at it doesn't mean they are too, or it comes as easy as it is to you. So be patient, be serious, and be prepared, and give them the best education that they can ask for. Tutors on average can earn between $20 and $30 an hour, but it's not uncommon for tutors to ask for more depending on how hard the subject is. Being a lifeguard is another great way to earn some money. Now, it will require some upfront capital uh, for your certificates, but you'll earn that back as soon as you can. Now, I remember when I lifeguarded when I was younger, uh, I worked at one of the largest pools in New York State. So. On average, we had between 3,000 and 3,500 people in our pool on any given day. Uh, so it was a lot. Uh, it was definitely an adventure. Uh, but in contrast, you could be working at like a local gym uh, where there's three to five people per hour. So uh, depending on your experience and the challenge you want to take and where you work, your lifeguarding experience can be drastically different. As long as you are actively watching the water and staying up to date on your training, you should be fine. Typically, as a lifeguard, you are a part of a team. So if there's any situation you can't handle, chances are your fellow guards will be able to help you. Now, a lifeguard on average makes between $15 and $25 an hour. When I worked, uh, the base pay was $22 an hour. But at the local gym that I also worked at, it was $16 an hour. But at the beach, where my friends and I would go to over the summer, the guards there made between $25 and $45 an hour because it was an ocean and it was much harder than a pool. A more niche job to consider is being a golf caddy. So you will need some prior experience and knowledge about golf, but also a good understanding of the course you're working on. So in a sense, you act as a golfer's assistant. You carry their clubs, uh, clean them if necessary, uh, make club suggestions, uh, and determine yardage. This is another more physically intensive job since you walk around the course all day carrying a fairly heavy bag in the sun. An average game of golf takes about four and a half hours. So if you're lucky, you can caddy for two games a day. A caddy typically earns between 15 and 30 an hour, uh, but majority of their income comes from tips. If you are passionate and knowledgeable about the game, you should impress your golfers and in turn earn some good money. Flea markets can be fun for people of all ages. Just imagine walking across a field with hundreds and hundreds of tables filled with thousands of thousands of items of all different ages and randomness. You get to talk to people uh, with a lot of passion for the things that they collect, and you get to haggle the prices down as much as you can to get the best price available. If this sounds interesting to you, then being a flea market flipper might be something to consider. Your job is to search for valuable or unique items at flea markets, garage sales, thrift stores, estate sales, and other secondhand sources. You look for items that can be bought at a low price and resold for a profit. In order to be successful, you will need to research the items you are potentially buying to see if there's a buck or two to be earned. You will also need to learn about trends, antiques, and popular items. To sell your items, 
You can also go to thrift stores or other flea markets, but I suggest also considering eBay, Craigslist, and Facebook Marketplace. Now, how much you earn as a flipper really depends on what you sell and how frequently you do it. You can make between a few dozen dollars to hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, depending on your volume. Just be sure to have fun and save a few things for yourself along the way. Baking is another great way to earn some money. So perfect example is I had a friend when I was lifeguarding who was lifeguarding, you know, four or five days a week and then baking the rest of the time. At first, she started just posting images of what she was baking to Facebook. Uh, and But then she started to get people commenting, being like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. How much would it cost for you to make it for me? And then she kept getting more comments and more comments. And then pretty soon she was baking so much uh, that she was lowering her lifeguarding hours and making more than she would as a lifeguard. You know, sometime during the summer, she actually stopped lifeguarding because of how much money she was bringing in. So this is another great option for you to earn some money on the side. So yeah, to be a home baker, you need to know your way around the kitchen and how to make goods quickly and right. If you don't know a recipe, you can always learn as you go, uh, but be sure to taste your finished products and follow the food and allergen safety. There are tons of people today with very specific dietary restrictions, uh, so try not to poison people. Be sure to take a lot of pictures and post them to your social media. My friend used Facebook and appealed to middle-aged women, but you can use any site you want and appeal to whatever demographic you want. Flashy packaging and offering a ton of options is another great way to appeal to customers. Just remember, a happy customer is a returning customer, so doing what you can to appeal to them is in your benefit. Just be sure to stay on top of your expenses. Just remember, you want to price these things to be competitive, but also to earn a buck. You need to include the cost of your ingredients, uh, how much money you spent on gas, and then your overall time into the prices. But among, but overall, be sure to have fun, right? You enjoy this as a hobby and you're trying to make some money, but don't let it weigh you down and don't let the business start to get to you. Lawn care is another great way for teens to earn money. Just grab your dad's weed whacker or his push cart and go around to the neighbors asking if you can volunteer your services. Typically, your neighbors will oblige because their professional lawn care services are considerably more expensive than probably the prices you're offering. And should you make a good impression, then consider yourself having a repeat client. Besides cutting grass and weed whacking, if you can offer other services, you can appeal to more customers and increase your rate. Clearing leaves and planting flowers and even removing yard waste can be other services you offer. Be sure to be efficient and correct. Your customers have tons of options, so any mess up can mean potentially losing a client. As per your price, charging between $20 and $50 an hour seems fair, but you also have to consider you might be able to charge more depending on the services you offer and how big the jobs are. But overall, good luck and have fun. Lawn care is very hard, but honest work. So there you have it. There are countless ways for teens to earn money and learn some real life experiences along the way. Like anything, starting a small business or pursuing a hobby uh, can be daunting at first, but if you take that first step, everything after it should be easy. As long as you're still passionate about what you do, uh, you're honest and you're hardworking, then everything should be fine. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you just saw, then click the video here. Also, if you haven't, consider liking, subscribing, and hitting the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.